Gosh darn it, what is that? Oh my god. Is that another one? And a little one there. Honey! Come! There's something in the tank! There you are. It's okay, don't worry. Bum ba da bum! That's it. Special guest appearance. No, that's not the reason. Either. Our homemade coral curry. Now some fish, again, Aptasia can live anywhere. Now what I like to use is a turkey braster. I'm gonna give them a day. Okay, I got that one perfectly in the mouth. That's it. We've got Aptasia. It's okay, don't worry. Everyone gets them. It's normal. It's a rite of passage in keeping a reef tank. What up? Okay, I'm gonna show you in this video how to get rid of them. I'm gonna show you some natural techniques, some unnatural techniques, the pros, the cons, and how to eradicate them from your reef tank forever. Okay, so I've managed to spot three of them in our Reef Casa Studio XL. Now, there's three of them I can see. That means there's probably a couple more that I don't see. So let's go head over to Fragbox, which I happen to own, and grab some stuff, and I'll show you some tricks and tips to get rid of them. There you are. All right, so let me show you a couple different ways to get rid of these Aptasia. Bergia nudibranchs. Nudibranch, nudibranch, nudi, nudibranch. However you want to pronounce it, these little slugs eat Aptasia. Actually, that's the only thing they eat. And they reproduce rapidly in your aquarium and they are really Aptasia's worst nightmare. They're kind of small, so they might get lost in a bigger tank like this. We usually recommend about one for every 20 gallons, 10 to 20 gallons, and if you have large wrasses like this one, they may just turn them into a quick, expensive snack. Hawkfish like this one here might also eat the Bergia nudibranchs. Awesome wrasses. Most wrasses in general, so if you have wrasses, that may not be the best choice um, for that one. But if you don't, then give those a shot. Let me show you a couple bottled solutions. We have Aptasia X from Red Sea. This has been around forever. This is a great product. Same with F Aptasia. This is really, really strong. So you're gonna be careful if you use this one. Um, it does say reef safe. They both claim to be reef safe. This I find is quite strong. This is pretty strong. These are manual solutions, but this isn't gonna get rid of all of them. So in the video, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you why they're good, but I'm also gonna give you some points on why they might not be the best. So they give you this uh, this little syringe here and you gotta go in there and then kill each individual, individual Aptasia. Now, the only problem with this is it's only gonna work on the ones that you see because you have to go in physically and manually nuke them. It's like a gel sort of formula. That you squirt inside their mouth and it's gonna kill. Aptasia can live anywhere. They're not just gonna sprout out where you wanna find them, they can be deep hidden inside the rock. So that's really only good for the ones that you're able to reach. Maybe you got a deep tank or a large aquarium and it's just not feasible to get in there and it's only gonna work for the ones that you can actually see. But that's not to say that this isn't a good part of your arsenal. Next, these are great, great little Aptasia munchers. We have the peppermint shrimp. Now some fish, again, may pick on them if you have some large triggers or fish that are prone to eating shrimp. This might not be the best option for you. Now I find the trick with these is to add them to your tank and get them to starve. What does that mean when you're feeding your fish? Make sure that no leftover food is reaching the bottom. I find that when they get hungry, they really go into like Aptasia killing mode. And it's such a satisfying feeling to watch one of these rip the guts out of one of those anemones. Now again, the downside, some fish may eat them. I love, love, love to spot feed our corals. And I'm gonna give you a shameless plug right now uh, on the show. our homemade coral curry, awesome stuff. Try it if you haven't tried it. Anyways, if you like to spot feed like I do, those shrimp will often go and then steal the food out of the coral that you're trying to feed, like acans or zoanthids, and they can be quite brutal. They don't really care um, about the guts or intestines. So when they're pulling food out of corals, mm, they're not they're not really sweet and gentle about it. So I like to add peppermint to get rid of Aptasia and then usually I'll take them out because I really, really like spot feeding my coral. All right, and now we have fish also as a solution. This cryptic looking fish here that almost looks like algae. Hello, buddy. This is an Aptasia eating file. Come on, don't be camera shy now. This fish here can be a powerful part of your arsenal against Aptasia. The only thing with this, again, they all have their cons. One, they swim really stupid. So if you can get around that, look at him, he's just floating like a dumb. That's not the real reason. He's just so ugly. No, that's not the reason either. They are known to eat 
LPS corals so and soft corals I find that they'll often pick on these over here my beloved clove polyps they love munching on these and they really like munching on acan corals so they're really useful but if you're keeping those types of corals you have to maybe proceed with caution now this tank that I'm keeping them in for here for aptasia control it's predominantly SPS or hard coral and I find they don't bother them at all so I'm more than happy to keep them in here and he's not going to bother the corals finally you can also use a uh, fish that I don't have here today to show you, but it's called a copper band butterfly. Let me show you what that looks like. Bum -ba -da -bum. Stunning. Beautiful. In my experience, very, very finicky eater. I've never had good long-term success. I find that I add them, they eat the Aptasia, and then they perish. I haven't had really, really good long-term success keeping them. And again, they tend to pick on Acans, LPS meaty, LPS sort of corals, so may not be a good long-term solution if you're trying to keep a mixed reef like this one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it from some multiple angles. I'm gonna go at it with the F Aptasia. One nice peppermint shrimp, ba-boom. And a little bit tough to see, but also I bagged up two of those Bergia nudie branch. Now you wanna hit Aptasia hard, and you wanna hit them fast and early. In my experience, you, you keep a reef tank long enough, you're gonna get them. I've never seen anyone who hasn't got them. It's just a normal, right, a natural pass in keeping one of these things. And it's, it's just something you manage. So if you first time reefer, if you're first time dealing with them, don't freak out. They're very common. And once they're in there, they're basically in there. Um, they're pretty hard to get rid of and they come and go. Maybe we're gonna get rid of them with our our triple attack over here, but that's not to say that we're future proof for later on. The Bergia, unfortunately, without Aptasia, they are going to die. I'm not gonna sit there and watch for new ones that are coming in. So it's good to learn how to deal with them because it's just a natural part of keeping one of these things in your home. Special guest appearance by Lizard Lady. Bring him to the basement. Okay, so let's introduce our new shrimpy friend. This little peppermint shrimp is gonna do a great job at helping us. Right, now I really hope the Ras is showing some interest in him, but I think he's gonna be too small to do any meaningful damage to this guy. Now what I like to use is a turkey braster. You see the Aptasia, the, sorry, rather the Bergia nudie branch is inside of it right now. And with the turkey baster, you wanna turn off your pumps and just gently get them right to land more or less where you want them. Oh, okay, close enough. He's gonna attach to the rocks, and he's gonna begin a hunting. We're gonna try and drop him very gently right on top of where we want him. Okay, and it, it appears that the Aptasia, Aptasia is trying to eat him, but uh, in a moment here, the tables are about to turn, my little Aptasia friend. Okay, I got that one perfectly in the mouth of the Aptasia. It's not gonna be able to eat him. He is gonna turn around and start eating him, so that's like basically a perfect spot. I'm gonna give him a day, see how they look, we'll report back tomorrow, and if needed be, we're gonna nuke them with the F Aptasia. Guess what the F stands for? All right, it's been a couple days now. I'm not seeing the peppermint shrimp. I think it's hiding in the rock. I'm not seeing the Bergia, but I'm also not seeing any of the Aptasia. Check this out. Nothing there and nothing over there. Now, is the tank Aptasia free? I, I'm looking through it and I can't see a single one. So maybe I just got lucky by getting them early. I didn't even have to use the other products. I just relied completely on the natural method. And there you go. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found this useful. If you want to see any other videos for pest removal on saltwater tanks or anything to do with maybe, you know, this reef casa tank or, or anything with corals, just message in the comments below and I'll, be make sh I'll make sure to do a video on it. Thanks for watching this episode of Fragbox TV. Bye for now.